Hey everybody, welcome to Cryptopia. So today's video is going to be brought to you by Michael, one of our partners here at Cryptopia. He's going to be bringing you many how-to and tutorial videos on everything crypto. I hope you enjoy this video. Stick around to the end and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Hey Cryptopians, welcome to another tutorial video. John, thanks for the intro. All right, everybody. So what we're looking at today is going to be Trust Wallet. Trust Wallet is another decentralized exchange uh, wallet that allows you to keep your keys in your crypto. It's a little bit more user friendly for those newer to the space. However, I like, use MetaMask and Trust Wallet uh, just the same myself. I prefer using Trust Wallet just because it's a little easier. However, MetaMask has a little bit better con connectivity. But today we're going to focus mainly on Trust Wallet and kind of get into some of the aspects of what it is and how to use it. Uh, first off, the most recent addition to Trust Wallet is the fact that they've actually put together a browser extension for uh, the desktop. <clears throat> As previously, it was only allowed for it to be used on mobile devices. So what you're going to want to do is go to TrustWallet.com and then click on the tab at the top that says Browser Extension, obviously new. And then you'll see that reflected in your URL address on your um, browser. Today we're going to be using Chrome. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it and see how to install the desktop browser so you can use Trust Wallet on your computer. So first thing we're going to do is click on the Get Trust Wallet. Then it's going to pull everything up here. As you can see, it's going to be Trust Wallet. And we want to make sure that everything looks correct. There's a lot of users on it that have used it. Um, and then we're going to go over to the Add to Chrome button and go ahead and click on that. Then we're going to click add, add extension. And considering the fact that I'm already signed in, it already put Trust Wallet on my browser. And then so what I can do is come up here and click this little piece and pull up the actual extension for Trust Wallet. Okay, so then it's going to, once we've opened the extension itself, it's going to bring us to this page here where we can either create a new wallet or we can import slash recover uh, wallet. Meaning, so if you already have your trust wallet on a mobile device and would like to add it to the desktop, that's where you're going to go ahead and click on the import or recover wallet. You're going to need your secret phrase to be able to do that. Uh, but today for today's example, we're just going to go ahead and create a new wallet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to create a new wallet and then it's going to ask for the privacy sharing and things of that nature. Considering this is a decentralized wallet and I like to be as anonymous as possible, it's just a safer practice considering the space can be somewhat risque. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click no thanks because I don't prefer to share my data. Then we're going to come to creating a password. Now, uh, it's considering this is an example wallet uh, and an example installation, I'm just going to create a password of Cryptopia. Once I've created the password and confirmed the new creation of the password, I'm going to go ahead and click the and agree to the terms of service and click proceed. Then it'll bring you to this next page, which uh, for those of you new to the space and using decentralized wallets, you have to make sure to write down and keep your secret phrase or your past phrase uh, on a piece of paper. I do not recommend storing it on your actual PC or your phone, copying it, taking a screenshot. Don't ever do any of those things because if any of your devices become compromised, people can access your accounts and will have full control over them. So I cannot stress this enough. Do not uh, take screenshots. Do not copy the passphrase. Uh, on your actual devices. Go ahead and write it down and keep it safe. And beyond that, do not share your secret phrase or your password with anyone ever. Uh, don't care who you're talking to online. They do not ever need that. Um, when we're using things like MetaMask and Trust Wallet, we're going to be connecting to dApps uh, and it'll ask us to connect our wallet. That's fine. And a further note to that, only connect your wallet to websites you can trust. If you can't trust a project, do not go there. If you're prompted by some type of spam or some type of, of instant message, do not click that link and connect your wallet. Don't do it. You can you can compromise the safety of your wallet. So just want to throw that little side note in there for you. Uh, let's go ahead and proceed. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on the start button. And it's going to give me this option window here. And it's going to make, make sure to tell you that you're getting your secret phrase on the screen um, and what that means. It'll allow you to recover your wallet even if you lose your, or your device or forget your password. So as you saw on the previous screen where we had set up a password, we are also going to have a secret phrase. Your password is going to allow you to log into a device that is already once used uh, or has been set up for your actual wallet. The secret phrase is total control, so this is the ultimate password. You do not want to let it out there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click on got it, and it's going to show me uh, a set of words, and this set of words is our actual uh, secret phrase. We're going to go ahead and write that down, and then from there, we're going to make sure to enter it and confirm it on the next page. Okay, now I've written down my uh, secret phrase. Like I said, it's not copied, it's not screenshotted, it's written down on a physical piece of paper, which if this were a real wallet of mine, I would be keeping that in a very safe place where I know that it can't be found and can't be touched, so that way I can access it later if I need it. So we're going to, head, going to go ahead and proceed. Now that we've come to the confirmation page for our secret phrase, we're going to go ahead and click the words in order of which we wrote them down in. Okay, now we've entered our secret phrase in order of which we have written it down, and it's going to allow us to click next to proceed. As you can see, we've now come to the congratulations page where we have successfully created a wallet. Now we're going to click uh, the open wallet button and go to the actual wallet. When it brings you here, it's just going to give you some tips as far as accessing uh, D centralized applications. As you can see at the top there, the examples they give you are Uniswap, SushiSwap, and PancakeSwap. Uh, each one of those I have used to quite an extent. Uh, just a little side note, uh, they are usable. However, I would recommend RocketX Exchange, which is something that we uh, have a referral link for you listed in the description below. Please be sure to go ahead and use that. And um, we also have a tutorial video on that as well, so check it out. Anyway, here also it's going to give you an order of which you should select the buttons to connect to a website or a DAP. Uh, first is going to be the Trust Wallet icon itself. If that icon is not present, you're going to want to click the Wallet Connect icon and then connect that way, uh, just as a side note. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed here and click the Got It button. This next page here is just to kind of give you a brief overview of the big blockchains that uh, are going to be easily accessed on your trust wallet. You can also add individual tokens and we'll get into that later. So I'm gonna go ahead here and click that I'm ready to use trust wallet and actually open the wallet itself. Okay, now we're in the actual trust wallet itself. Uh, as you can see here, it lists most of the major networks. You've got Avalanche, Binance, Ethereum, Matic, Solana, and of course, Trust Wallet's Smart Chain, which is Trust Wallet's token on uh, the Binance Smart Chain. Okay, now we're in the Trust Wallet, and you can see some of the top blockchains that are actually uh, preloaded pre onto the wallet itself. You can add more if you need to, but these are the most operable blockchains of which Trust Wallet supports. Now, as you can see here, we've got a send button, a receive button. If we want to send crypto, we're going to go ahead and click on that, and it's going to give us the different uh, blockchains to actually send uh, the different types of currency on. So just for example, we're going to go ahead and click on Avalanche. Just for example, you have Avalanche here where it's going to show you that you need to enter the address of who you're sending the crypto to and then the actual amount that you're sending. That covers the send part of it. Then to receive crypto, we're going to click on the receive button, pick the specific uh, network that we're wanting to receive it on. Uh, just to, to kind of give you an idea though, it's pretty interesting, just like MetaMask, that you can have a, almost the exact same address for each type of asset. So as you can see here, when I click on Avalanche, it's going to show me an address ending in 93934. And then when I click on Binance, it's going to be the same, 93934. And then when I click on Ethereum, it's going to be the same, 93934. This holds true for most of it. Same here on Matic. 
Um, however, when you get to something like Solana, it is going to vary. So you want to make sure that you're always giving the proper address to someone uh, so that way you can actually receive your tokens. So if you click on Solana, as you can see, it's a completely different address. You want to make sure to go into that exact type of currency and copy that address by putting your mouse on here, clicking the copy address, pasting that address to whoever's going to be sending you a payment. So that way they have the correct address. Okay, so we're back here on the wallet page and I just wanted to go over a couple more things with you. You can go to your history and it will show you information of uh, received and sent transactions. And you can also click the different explorers depending on which blockchain you're using. Okay, and now we're gonna go into the settings and just kind of go over a couple things. While you're in the settings, it will show you that you can click the different networks and as you see, preloaded, um, just like MetaMask, um, there are a list of different networks that are preloaded into uh, Trust Wallet. So we obviously have Avalanche, Ethereum, Polygon, and Smart Chain, Binance Smart Chain. Um, what you need to note about this is you can have different sub assets with multi, uh, multiple contracts. So you can have, for example, Gala is on the Ethereum network and it's also on the Binance Smart Chain. They are the same token and the same value, but the actual type of token is different. So with Ethereum, it's gonna be an ERC20 token, whereas on the Binance Smart Chain, it's going to be a BEP20 token. These are things to pay attention to when you're sending or receiving. Um, you don't wanna mix them up. And if also if you're in your wallet and say you've purchased some Gala and you're on the Ethereum network and you don't see your Gala, you want to go ahead and click on the smart chain because you may have purchased um, Gala tokens that are actually BEP20 tokens and those will show up only if you go like this and click on the actual uh, Binance smart chain. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, they do provide test networks here, which you're not really going to uh, be getting into. But at the bottom of the page here, as you can see, there's an add custom network feature. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. And again, just like with MetaMask, it allows you to add a custom network. So what you're going to do is go ahead and enter your network name, the RPC URL, the chain ID, the token symbol, and the blockchain URL. Once you've entered all that in correctly, you want to double check that and make sure it's correct. Go ahead and click add custom network. And once you do, it will allow you to have added that network. Back to the settings page here, uh, you can go through different languages. So if you don't speak English, they give you a whole list of different languages uh, to actually run your trust wallet in. Then of course, there's the option for setting up your setting it as your default wallet. You can go ahead and do that too if you only wanna run trust wallet. Um, I'll just leave that set as is. This right here is share product analysis. This goes back to that privacy page where I told you that I was not going to share my analytics or my information because I value my privacy. And if you want to, you can turn that on. I don't recommend it. Doesn't make much difference in my opinion as far as what you do, but I'm not going to share my information. Then you can go down here to where it says you can view your secret phrase. When you click on this button, you're going to be prompted to enter your password. Again, I will enter the password that I created for this example wallet. Once I've entered my password, it's going to show the secret phrase. Again, do not click copy, do not click download, write it down by hand. So that way you're not compromising yourself. As you can see, it doesn't display it for long. Back to the settings page, help and support tab allows you to click on here uh, to access their help center or their support center. Down here at the very bottom, you can also lock your wallet. What this does is it logs you out and allows you <clears throat> to make sure your assets are no longer accessible unless someone has your password or the secret phrase. So just make sure to know that if you want to lock out, lock your wallet or sign out, that is the option to do it. Also note here at the bottom, um, you can reset your wallet or create a new one. 
that is the reset wallet button and that is an option okay so now that we've gone through the settings sending and receiving uh, adding networks to the wallet this is how you have it on your desktop there is also a manage tokens button up here and this is going to get us into adding additional types of tokens so what we're going to do if we want to add a token oftentimes you can search a token by name which i do not recommend what you're going to want to do is go to coin market cap or coin gecko and once you're there find the token that you want to add and go down and find the actual contract for the token itself go ahead and copy that contract address and paste it in this tab here once you do that it will allow you to add that custom token so paste your address here your contract address and then click add custom token once you have done that it will be displayed here in your list of assets in your wallet okay so we've gone over the ins and outs of the trust wallet how to install it on your desktop some of the ins and outs of sending and receiving payment switching between the different networks um, connecting to dApps uh, making sure to write down and keep your recovery phrase safe um, and then also we've gone through the managing of tokens so if you guys have any other questions, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content that we're putting out for you. Um, also, we have a Telegram. Please be sure to join that if you'd like to get in on some of our ICO sales. We have a Patreon where we also do buy and sell and stake alerts. And we also have a Discord. So there's many different places where you can reach us. Be sure to come check us out and we'll see you in the next video.